Well, good afternoon, my gandang hapon, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We are going on a very short road trip uh, to an optometrist. We always get questions around here about hospitalization, dental, any of those things that we take for granted in the U.S. and are kind of concerned if we move to the Philippines. How do we get these things done, all these health needs? Well, anyway, Ness uh, broke her glasses and we're going to tell you a little story about how we tried to get it fixed and a way that uh, today what we're going to do is we weren't satisfied with what happened. Well, I'll show you in just a moment. You'll be surprised at uh, something that happened on one of our optometrist visits. And uh, today's visit is to another optometrist, I think, to get a whole new prescription and a whole new set of glasses. And maybe along the way, we'll talk a little bit about health insurance uh, and things that you might be concerned about if you decide to move to the Philippines. But anyway, I think we're going to take a real quick brief trip here inside the raised bed garden because I want to show you something and then we're going to hit the road and head on down to the optometrist. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Now before we head out the door, I just wanted to show you a couple of things that I've been working on back here inside the raised bed garden. And it has to do with uh, something we talked about last week, which was the dragon fruit. Uh, some really new uh, things that are popping up that I need to show you. This is Citao. Citao, this is beans. Actually, I got these, I look grow too long. Once they start getting like this, the beans start getting hard and no good. You need to collect them when they're a little bit younger than this. But this is what I wanted to talk about. You see this? We have a bunch of new dragon fruit starting here. Here's one, on, on, and they're both on the same plant. We've got one here, and we got this one up here as well. So I expect to be seeing some really nice blossoms, uh, really nice flowering on these. I don't know how many days it takes. This started about a week ago. So we're about five to seven days going from a little, it was, it was a small little bud that looked, I don't know if you can see, they're kind of gone now. These two had something that looked like it and they grew into something like this. So we'll keep an eye on This is about a week's worth of growth. We'll keep an eye on these two right here. But anyway, I was, I'm excited about these and I wanted to share that with you. I got a bunch of pepper planted back here too. Now these are the pepper plants that grow the type of uh, type of uh, peppers, the really long, and they call them sile. I think they call them sile. I don't know if I pronounce, Ness always says I pronounce it wrong. I call them chili, chili peppers. Uh, I think us foreigners do that. But these are the ones that you would use inside thing like synagogue, the very long ones. And then over on the other side, we have the, the small, remember I showed you those small, you can see all the red chili on those as well. So they're doing really good. Now before we leave, this is a trivia of the day. I have to ask this because I don't know what this is. I planted this plant right here. If anybody can tell me what this plant is, it kind of looks like a tree. I'm telling you, it looks like a tree. It has a normal bark of a tree. It's getting ready to start like a tree. I don't know. This is kind of a unique looking leaf. Uh, again, I plant things, I put seeds, and sometimes I forget what it is. Let me know if you think you know what this plant is right here. Okay, well that's enough for Gardening 101. Let's go ahead and get on that road trip and go visit an optometrist in Lipa. Now before we actually leave the subdivision, what I want to do is talk a little bit about our previous experience. Now what Ness did, she broke her glasses. Uh, I think she said she, she stepped on them or something like that. She, she broke the frame. She broke the, the corner with a, with a piece that goes over your ear and it connects to the front. And it broke. It I really. Sat on it. You sat on it. <laughs> oh, she didn't tell me that. She sat on it. Okay. So anyway, it was broken, it, and it was bad broken. It was not in a place where a screw comes out. It was the metal was broken. So we went to SM Lipa. We went uh, to optical shops. Optical shops where you could get glasses, you can get eye examinations, mm. and you can get prescriptions made there. Uh, well, we went through a few of them. All we wanted to do, since it was only the the frame that was broken, and I'll show you a picture in just a little bit uh, of the result of our, our, our little talk here today. But the uh, we, we went through several places and several places said, no, they can't use the existing lens. You have to get a whole new prescription with them. 
and they couldn't fit the older lens to to new frames then we found one place and what was the name of the place that we found ideal vision ideal vision and i think it's across from mcdonald's inside sm lipa so we went to ideal vision and they said yes they can take the lens and they can do something to the lens to make that lens fit into any frames that were basically smaller than the size of the lens uh, so that's what we did. We thought, oh, we scored a good opportunity here because she knows her glasses were good. They were fine. There was no problems with the lens until after what we're going to talk about here. Well, anyway, uh, while we were in the shop, she picked out some really nice, and these are the le the, the frames here. Can you show the frames right here? Yes, this is nice. Very nice, very nice frames, but they were very expensive. The Just for the frames alone, they were 3000 what? 3700 3700 no, There are more expensive I, ones. I think right too. around, I think that comes out to They're around. Really expensive here, my yeah. God. And these were inexpensive ones compared to uh, the, others, so, like the other frames that they had inside there. Yes. So anyway, I think that comes out to it's about $80. $80. And they're very, very nice frames. Uh, but that's not what the problem is. What happened is they took the lens and they did something to the lens to make it fit inside it because they had to cut it and they had to do something. I suspect either they applied heat, some type of heat, or they did some type of compression to the lens because when they did that, uh, they damaged both of the lens. And I'll show you a picture here in just a moment. Uh, in post editing, I'll show you a picture of what happened to those lens, but they destroyed it. They made it to the point where, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, you can't see through, only through the very center bottom then there's a huge cloudy mark in a circle that goes around both the lenses M made them uh, you can't use them at all they they're not I, I believe that when they clamped when they're fitting the the frames they had to hold the lens in the so the the rubber that holds the lens and that, be the one that made the mark here and that is my my compression explanation of what she just said there but I also think maybe they might have applied some kind of heat. Yeah. I don't know. One of those two, th those are the only two reasonable explanations I could figure what caused it to destroy it. Well, she went back down to this vision center after she noticed that when she got back to the house and uh, asked them what they could do because it was really whatever process that they used that destroyed both the lenses. And I'll let Ness explain to you when she asked uh, for replacement or what they could do what they told her well i asked them to uh, what they could do to fix this and they said that well they they can't do anything with it because the coating of these lenses were already destroyed and so and i asked how much would it take for this to to uh, replace and they said um, because it's progressive lens uh, it would uh, cost me about 18,000 and that's the cheapest and they would give me a little discount like 12,000 so anyway uh, US, US pricing that's probably normal but we found out that we might be able to get a much better price uh, going through a different place, not inside the mall. So anyway, she wasn't satisfied with that. So <laughs> we're going to another op optometrist shop, they and, my lens. and we're and we're going to see. Yeah, they, they destroyed it, and they went. Uh, they destroyed her lens. That's what she said. <laughs> uh. Okay. So anyway, we are we are on our way to the optometrist shop, and we're going to take you along with us. Hey, we're at, at a place called Lima. I hope you can hear me through all this, but it's mandatory. Around here you have to have face masks and face shields and everything. Anytime you go in the general population for the, for the shopping area. So anyway, uh, this is Lima. It's, it's Lima Technology Park, but they also have an outlet. And we're looking for the optometry shop. So 
So while we're while we're sitting here, there's something I just wanted to bring up, and I asked the op the optometry shop here, the people that work here, I asked them about insurance for for prescription glasses here inside the Philippines, and that's not something that you're normally going to find here in the Philippines. Like in the U.S., many of your employers employers will have programs that will offer uh, uh, prescription glasses insurance that they have not here in the Philippines. So something you need to think about if you are retiring here in the Philippines. Now as far as availability goes, you can see they offer things like transition and also what Ness has, she has glasses like what I have, uh, progressive where you, you either have bifocals or trifocals and the progressive can be seamless so that you don't see in between the different prescriptions inside the glasses. So that is offered over here. Want to change your eye color? They even have uh, contact lenses that can be used that can change the color of your eyes. <laughs> this one, the doctor has measured my vision again and they're going to replace the lenses for this one. Okay. Yeah. These, these are the new frames new that I have from the other <laughs> the other optical center. <laughs> and this is the backup eyeglasses and so I'm going to order the frame and the and the uh, and the legs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. After I don't know. It seems like a couple hours, but it probably wasn't a couple hours. Ness has her uh, everything done. She got her eyes examined, and she ordered two pair of glasses. Yes. And we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between the one place that we went to that we had problems with over at uh, SM Lipa, and this place right here. Now over at SM Lipa for one pair of glasses with the frames and if they were to have replaced the lens that the total between the two for one pair of glasses was about 16,000 pesos. 16, yeah. Nest at this place and what was the name of this place? It's Optic Outlet. Outlet. Optic Outlet. Optic, Optic Outlet. Outlet here over in Lima yeah. in the Lima Outlet mall outlet over here. She's getting two pair of glasses for the same pair. Same yeah. price. The same basically the same price. So a full prescription of the frame yeah. and the glasses <laughs> and and also new lenses to go inside the frames yeah. that she purchased from the other place. So anyway, it's, it, was a, it was a discount. We saved a lot by going to this place over here. And, and 10 it, days, 10 days. And it will, yeah, um, the lenses will be, uh, the lenses and the glass will be ready. The glasses will be ready in 10 days. While there, I will have to wait like one and a half month. Okay. Yeah. So the time, <laughs> the time period is a lot better over here as well. We are uh, we're getting there. So anyway, when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit more. Now here we talked about uh, that they don't really offer vision uh, health insurance. Yes. Uh, and that came directly from the, the shop that we just spoke to here, the doctor here. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to head home and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get home. So this is our clubhouse here and the pool in the back has some issues and I'm going to talk about some of the issues that we're trying to address so that we can kind of get it back in operation again for our residents here. Uh, there was a problem, well let's go back to the back of the swimming pool and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh wait, what's going on here? Oh this is, this is Lazada. Lazada. Hey, oh, is this for us? Oh, how did you find us here? Are you tracking us? Are you like, are you like one of those three-letter agencies, like the C 
the uh, CIA or the NSA? How did you find us? Oh, you're LAZ, that's why. <laughs> LEX. <laughs> And there they found it. I think they have some type of, I think Lazada has some type of drone, some tracking. How'd they find us here? <laughs> Maybe they have a special tracking device on all of us that we don't even know about from one of their deliveries. I guess we just received the package. Okay, let's go on down to the swimming pool. This is our swimming pool. This is the, the clubhouse. This is one of the amenities that we have here inside our subdivision. It's like a full size swimming pool. And then we have the kiddie pool over here. Now the problem that we have here is the swimming pool for some reason, I don't know if it happened when it was built or over the years, because I think this was built in 2007, the pool is not level. And I'm gonna guess since we're not leaking, we're not leaking, there's no cracks that I know of, uh, that maybe the pool wasn't done properly at the very beginning. So let me show you what I worked on yesterday because the main problem is, is the skimmer over here works properly but because of the height difference because this is actually lower on this end than this part of the swimming pool is it's so high over here the water can't get over the little wall that goes to the skimmer so we have an unevenness and the only way to correct this is something i worked on yesterday let me show you what i worked on yesterday so the way this type of skimmer is supposed to work you see this little wall right here this is actually the drain for the for the skimmer. So any debris like this leaf over here, if this were turned on and the pumps were running, all of the debris that sits on the top of the water should go over this if the water would go over. But right now it's not even over the top of this wall right here and be sucked over into this area. And it's easy to scoop, scoop up the debris from right here when you do daily maintenance here. Uh, but this is not being used. So that's just gonna continue to float and float and float and then eventually drop to the bottom and you're gonna have to collect it with one of those nets, the pool nets that they use. But we wanna be able to get it here so it's easily done. And even when it's unattended, there's no maintenance person out here, it's very easy. Uh, so the, the problem, let me show you the problem. Uh, of course, other than the pool being not level, when the water does go over the section right here, it won't go over the section down there because the pool is higher on that end than here. So it won't go over the wall. So we can't use the skimmer on that end. So what I did yesterday, I came down here and I'm gonna show some pictures. And the pictures are gonna show you basically, they're gonna show you what it looked like before. There's a drain, there's a drain over here to the side. And it was just a pipe in the wall. But when the water level got up to the point here where it was acceptable and it was too high, it would go down the drain like it's supposed to do. But at that end, at that end, it would never go over the wall because again, the pool is not level. So anyway, what I did, I ended up putting in this. I purchased some parts. I purchased some parts and what I did was I raised the level. I raised the level of where the water, see right, it's down to here. We're about almost two inches before we go into this section right here. So now so, the, th the theory is if they would have put the water in here, uh, I was kind of hoping they had the water topped off so we could test it today. That's the reason we came down here. Uh, but they're putting the water in now. They're adding water. And what we'll do is we'll test it after the water gets inside here. So once we fix this problem and the water level can go up, which we'll be able to go over this one, and we can start using the skimmer on that end down there, then that should eliminate the problem we have with a lot of the debris on the top. But we have to make sure that the overflow is higher. And that's what this little device is right here that I installed. I just picked up a couple of pieces from a, a, the local big box hardware store and I put these inside where the overflow is. Uh, but what I'm going to do now, I think we're going to pick, we're going to pick one of these Jurassic Park lemons back here. And this one's got some yellow on it. Ooh, I think we're going to let that yellow even more. Let's see what we have over here. Even though this one over here is not yellow, it is so huge. I think we can go ahead and pick it. I think we're going to go ahead and pick this one right here. Here we go. This is our Jurassic Park lemon, and we're gonna take this, and I still have a couple, two or three of the buco, uh, the coconuts from our coconut tree in our front yard. And we're gonna take the inside of this lemon and some of the buco juice and some of the buco, coconut, some of the coconut meat on the inside, and uh, put, put it in the blender. We're gonna make a little refreshing drink here before we go to the next topic. 
All right, what we're going to do here, we're going to do Buco 101. Coconut 101 is, uh, we can call it back in the U.S. By the way, I, I'm not the expert. I will tell you right now, I'm not the expert on coconuts. Uh, but I learned a little bit from other people doing things, specifically my gardener. My gardener is the expert. So I'm going to show you what I learned from my gardener for extracting coconut juice and getting the buco. And we've talked about this in some other episodes. Uh, but for those who are new to the channel, just popped in today, I'm going to show you. If you have a coconut and you want to make either buco shake, buco smoothie, or just some buco juice, coconut, uh, this is how you do it. Well, anyway, this is really, if you live in the Philippines, if you are a Filipino, everybody in the Philippines knows what this is. Uh, and it comes in different designs and different shapes, but this is the bolo knife. And the bolo knife, if you are live in the Philippines, and this is blessed, this is blessed land here, because if you live in the Philippines, 365 days of the year, it's beautiful. I mean, green, uh, none of these things that we have in North America, like that white stuff that falls from the sky all the time. Uh, most of you know what I'm talking about if you're from North America. But anyway, if you have a bolo knife, you can survive. This is all you need to survive in the Philippines because this right here will do everything for you. It will help you open up coconut so that you can eat. It will help you harvest food. It will help you build if you were to build something like a Bahay Kubo. You can cut bamboo with this. You can cut all the things that you need. So for food, for shelter, and security <laughs> I guess you could say uh, this is really all you need inside the Philippines okay well anyway uh, I'm gonna show you a uh, coconut has two ends this is the end that the stem comes from that goes to the tree and hangs into here and this is the bottom so if you're cutting a coconut and you want to get inside and you want to get the juice and you want to do whatever you need to do you start on the bottom side right here this little bottom and now again I'm not the expert but I'm going to sh show you how I do it based upon my learning from my gardener. Now my gardener can cut this section right here. He'll cut the bottom piece right here. And he does it in about six chops. Boom, 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 six times and he's done. It might take me about 20 or 30 to get to it because uh, I'm not as skilled and I, and I want to keep all the fingers that I still have. So let me show you how this is done. Again, this is aside from the stem. We're not going to do this. We're going to do this end. We're going to do the bottom. Now, you just have to be careful. If you are using a sharp knife, a sharp object of any kind, you always need to be careful. That's why it takes me 30 times because my, my gardener will sit here. He'll put his hand here and he'll leave it here and he'll cut. But he is so accurate and he's been doing this all his life. He's a couple years older than me and he still has all his fingers. So I trust him. But for me, I kind of I kind of put my hand back and I use this part of the blade right here to get it started. And you do it on a little bit of an angle so you don't go towards your hand. You kind of go away from your hand. So this is what we're going to do. Now, the object is you want to get to the white section here. Uh, you want to do it at an angle as much as possible so that you can cut off a nice section. I'm not sure that I have enough cut off yet, but again, I still want to keep my fingers. So I'm going to try to cut off just a little bit more. Okay, well, I actually did it quite, normally you would see the white here, uh, but I actually popped it off and and it's clean. And there is our coconut juice inside there, our buco juice. And what we'll do is we'll capture that, we'll grab that, put it inside a container, and then I'll split this open. Stand by. All right, now we have our juice. And the next thing to do is we're going to split the coconut. And uh, I'm, I'm going to save this and after we extract the coconut from, I'm gonna save this for Mary Ann, because Mary Ann, our dog Mary Ann, she's the buco queen. She loves buco. Hapon won't touch it, but you'll see. I'll show, I'll show you her eating the buco later. So now we just wanna split this in half and see if I can do this without cutting the fingers off also. And there also, there's also a little bit of a split here, so that's gonna help me out. Now, my again, my gardener will do this and cut with his hand. I will not do that. There we go. 
So now we'll clean this out on the inside, get a little bit of that husk, the coconut husk off of it, and then we'll go ahead and scoop out all the good coconut meat, or the buco they call it here. Time for the front test. So what's in here? It's uh, the, the Jurassic lemon and <laughs> the coconut, the buco. The buco. Okay. All right. So anyway, everything here, everything here is from our garden except for the sugar. I added some sugar. Mm, all and, natural? Yeah, all oh, natural except for, except the, sugar. for the sugar. Except for the sugar. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, I got it. Oh, this is like the best. <laughs> I think this, oh, this is good. This is the best. I think this is the best mm. of all the combinations that we did. The banana and the coconut or the lemon mm. by itself. This is the best. How much lemon did you put? I put one lemon. One of the big lemons. One of the oh, big the, the biggest one that was on there. One, and it yielded a lot of lemon. And it frosted just right inside there. I like the uh, it's like a uh, like an ice seed like you would get at 7-Eleven. That's what it tastes like. Mm. Hope I didn't break any I like this light, copyrights. Yeah, it's like, slight sourness. Yeah, it's, it's a very right, it's it's a, slight. Per perfect, yeah. Mm. Okay, two thumbs up, two thumbs up. Yeah! Marianne, you want your buco? I know, here's the buco girl. Here's the buco girl. You want your buco? All right, Marianne, we got our buco. Here's your buco. Here. <gasps> Look at that. Well, it's actually day three into this this video production, uh, and I'm sorry it's taken so long to get this out, but I'm going to go ahead and close out right here. Now, I know one of the things, it's, it's really early in the morning here, but this is one of my favorite times uh, being uh, in the backyard here in Villa Feliz. It's, so, it's usually so very quiet here, and it's really relaxing. Get my first cup of coffee in the morning, and kind of chilled out back here. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit was those different types of health insurances that you have over here because I know that's always, like I said earlier, that's one of those things that people are always asking about. If I retire to the Philippines, what kind of health insurance do I have, whether it be dental or vision or medical insurance, all the different kind of things. And we'll probably go more depth into health insurance in another episode. But something to be aware of is although that they do have some health insurance over here, which is something that Ness and I have. We have something called Phil Health. Uh, Phil Health is a it's a it's a nice benefit if you are a resident of the Philippines, and uh, the pricing isn't really bad at all. But then again, uh, the uh, the benefit that you get back from it, if you have something that's catastrophic, uh, some type of major event, it may or may not pay uh, so much when it comes to recovering money from whatever that event might be. Uh, and again, I think we should have mentioned it in our cost of living episode 
uh, but we pay 15,000 pesos per year and it's a little bit less than most uh, expats will pay over here because if you un unless you fall under the uh, the SRRV program from the Philippine Retirement Authority that's the resident visa that we have here you get a little bit of a discount uh, but it's about 15,000 pesos per year uh, but it does help out a bit uh, other insurances that you have over here like I was saying vision uh, dental uh, not so much it's not quite as available so if you are considering moving to the Philippines and you have some pre-existing conditions uh, health care is something you might want to really look into before you make that big leap well, that's it that's gonna be it for today's episode I need to get this finalized and out and on YouTube well anyway got my first cup of coffee here in the morning again love the mornings here in the Philippines well I hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed. And if you click that bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time from right here in the Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed day. enjoyed today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well <laughs>